Hey guys, Philly Pipe Smoker here, and no, you're not looking at tobacco or pipes today. I've been meaning to do this video for quite a while. I've had to take some things off the shelf anyway to strengthen the shelf up a little bit. So I thought maybe today was a, a good day to uh, make this video. So what you're seeing in front of you is uh, the premium area of my bourbon collection. Um, there's a couple other uh, things here that aren't bourbon, but <clears throat> for the most part, uh, these are all bourbons. And uh, you'll see two main um, distilleries here, uh, Woodford and um, Buffalo Trace. Uh, you also see a bottle of Maker's Mark there, but for the most part, uh, all my premiums are either from uh, Buffalo Trace or Woodford. Uh, what you're not seeing here is one of my favorite everyday bourbons, if I could afford to drink it every day, it would be just a standard Woodford Reserve. <clears throat> um, when I have it, uh, when I do get a bottle, I do drink it because I enjoy it so much. But uh, basically, I just kind of go over what we have here and uh, show you my collection. I'll start off on the Buffalo Trace. And the first bottle is uh, Old Rip Van Winkle 10 year old. Um, all of the uh, Old Rip Van Winkle and the Pappy Van Winkle lines are very, very difficult to find, uh, if you can even find them today. Uh, a lot of these I purchased anywhere between three and six years ago uh, when you were able to get some. Now the lines, um, when the collections are released once a year, the, the lines are around the block even in Kentucky. And uh, there's only a few, I think maybe 5,000 bottles on most on some of these that uh, get, get bottled. So um, <clears throat> we'll start off with the, as I did the 10 year old, we'll move along to Van Winkle, 12 year old, um, 90 proof, excellent. These are weeded uh, bourbons. Uh, again, I tend to go more towards the rye side because I like the spiciness as opposed to the sweetness. Uh, but the wheat whiskeys do tend to age better. Um, so you have Old Rip Van Winkle, 10, Pappy, 12. Then we'll move into, I have a couple of bottles of the Pappy Family Reserve 20 year. Now this is just outstanding uh, bourbon. I've been also been lucky enough to have two of the uh, 23 year old, I believe, uh, in my collection at some point, but they were uh, shared with friends and uh, they're gone, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> a friend of mine who's been trying to uh, buy one for me, um, offered some guy a, a large amount of money to give me the bottle, which I really appreciate, but you just, uh, it's just it's too hard to find. And now I'm going to move to a couple of the um, collections that come out once a year only. And uh, one of them is Sazerac 18 year old rye. You can see this was released fall of 2010. This was a gift. Uh, it's five years old. Uh, this comes out once a year. This is the best rye whiskey, in my opinion, ever made. It's just so good. Uh, it's extremely uh, powerful flavors. It's only 90 proof, but um, man's it good stuff. And now I'm going to show you what I think is the second best bourbon ever made, and it is Stag Junior. Uh, this is done at 132 proof, as you can see barrel proof as it comes out of the barrel it's put right into the uh, bottle it's unfiltered uh, I was able to find these two bottles actually not long ago on a bottom shelf somewhere at a major retailer um, and I was able to get these <clears throat> excellent 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 bourbon best bourbon in my opinion ever made George T Stag 143 proof these three bottles again I found these at a major retailer um, Every time I would go back, there'd be one on the shelf way in the back, and I, and I got three of them. And this is, we're going back at least six years ago when I got these three. Um, it's a mammoth bourbon. Um, you can actually go on the Buffalo Traces website and uh, download a video or watch a video on YouTube and um, of a, the uh, marketing person trying this, uh, George T. Stagg. <clears throat> un, un, unbelievable. Uh, best bourbon, in my opinion, ever made. Um, I was talking to my wife just the other day and I said, you know, I have these three uh, superb bourbons down there. And she said, you know, Bill, you can't take them with you. You might as well drink them. So uh, probably in October or November. You know what? I'm going to do it in November. I'm, I turned 60 in November. 
and I will crack one of these Jewish tea stags open and share it with friends. Now we move on to another one of my new favorites, probably the third best um, bourbon I've ever had. It's E.H. Taylor, small batch. Also by Buffalo Trace, extremely limited uh, production. Every time our local state store gets them in, I buy them. They know that I come looking for them. They even put a couple away for me. I, I've had probably six of these over the past um, year. Um, I have four uh, left and uh, just outstanding bourbon. Not as old as their other uh, bourbons. Uh, very powerful in, um, in flavor. It's only 100 proof. Uh, all these, by the way, do really well by adding a few drops of water. Um, none of these I would ever mix with in, in a cocktail, uh, although I'm sure people do. Uh, to me, these are all uh, sipping whiskeys. Move on to another one that uh, is relatively easy to get, I think, is Booker's. Uh, again, more of a weeded uh, style than I like. Um, comes in a kind of a, uh, you can't even take it out because it's, it's waxed in there. But you can see this is 129.2 proof. And uh, I, allegedly one of the first um, small batch single barrel uh, bourbons. Uh, that's, that's what I hear. That and Blanton's. Uh, they, they both make that claim, I believe. And now we're going to move to a Maker's Mark. Now a lot of people, to a lot of people, Maker's Mark is bourbon. Uh, it's a little too sweet for me. I usually don't drink the regular stuff. The um, uh, Maker's 46, which is when they add a stave uh, back in that's been recently charred. It gives it more of a smoky flavor, a little more complex. I like it a little bit more, but I'll tell you what, this cast drink stuff is really good. 113.2 proof, as you can see. When I bought this um, in Kentucky, you only, they only had uh, limited releases, and they put them in these small bottles. Uh, I have now been able to purchase a full-size bottle of the cast drink. Uh, and we'll certainly do uh, more of those in time. And now, uh, also in Buff from Buffalo Trace, going back to Buffalo Trace, I guess, is their experimental collection. Um, they do a lot of experimenting with uh, different bourbons and rye. And um, this particular one is a bourbon still. Um, it, t it gives you all of the uh, particulars of when it was distilled and. Uh, this one is a corn, malt, and rice. Now, so they replace the wheat or the rye with rice. Uh, certainly, you can still tell it's a Buffalo Trace product. It has a unique um, crisp, crispness, maybe, uh, would be the best way to say it from the rice. Um, and it's, uh, again, they give you all of the particulars. of uh, It was nine years, five months in the, in the barrel. Uh, they lost 36% of it uh, in the barrel. And I believe they were probably small um, barrels. Um, 90 proof, chill filtered, so it does have some, some uh, filtration. But I'll tell you what, uh, a unique bourbon, to say the least. And now we go to Woodford. We have a rye new cask and a rye aged cask. So, so they made the rye whiskey. Um, they put some of it in new charred oak barrels, as all bourbon has to be. Now this is rye, but that's all bourbon. And then they put some in casks that they normally would then have shipped overseas to uh, Irish or Scots, Scotch makers, which is where all the bourbon barrels go for the most part. Um, and that's an aged cask. So, so the one's going to have a lot deeper wood notes, uh, a lot deeper colors, you can see. And the other one is basically a real refilled cask. cask. Um, I haven't tried either of these. Uh, I got them a few years ago when I was down in Tennessee. Um, that box there is well over $100. And uh, so I will wait for a unique um, celebration to open those. And then we go to another, the Masters Collection from Buffalo Trace. I'm sorry, from Woodford Reserve. Um, this is a straight malt. Uh, certainly in, on the theme of a Scotch whiskey, uh, as opposed or an Irish whiskey as opposed to a bourbon. Uh, this is not bourbon, this is malt whiskey. And um, it's really unique and interesting. Uh, they released the Masters Collection once a year, uh, and I was able to pick up two of these and one uh, clear, uh, which would be, I guess, unaged, uh, which is pretty interesting. 
and also I was able to procure three of these at one point. Uh, again, the Masters Collection Woodford Reserve for wood. Sorry, it's not focusing, guys. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. And a barrel at 47.2 proof. I'm sorry, 94.4 proof. Alcohol by volume is 47.2. And it's the Masters Collection again for wood. So if you can, you can look at look at it up online but it's basically um, uh, where they add wood or, or move the, the bourbon four times uh, so it gets wood four different times four influences of different woods different chars and I will tell you when you first open that up it is dry it, the, the tannins are huge um, it, it actually is best when you decant it in the decanter and let it sit for a few weeks and then that kind of mellows down and then you come up with all these unique flavors uh, of Woodford Reserve. Uh, Woodford Reserve is the only one that I know that has all fruit flavors. I've tasted uh, a bunch of different fruit and, and spice notes in Woodford. Again, Woodford's probably my, my go-to every day if I could uh, drink it. So anyway, there's my premium uh, selection of my bourbons and whiskey. Uh, I hope to do a second video on just Jack Daniels. I have quite a few different uh, releases from Jack Daniels. Uh, and if this is well received, I will certainly do that. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great weekend.